Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series. I am Seth Macy, and today I am joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Welcome back, Seth. Well, thank It's a pleasure to be here. And of course, Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation podcast, Podcast Beyond. Beyond. Good to see you, Seth. Oh, likewise. Today, we will be discussing Grand Theft Auto 5's upgrade pathing and the Sony State of Play for March 9th. So let's get right into it. Grand Theft Auto 5 next-gen upgrades are coming out, and the pricing doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. If you want to get it for PS5, it'll be 75% off for the first three months of launch, which is $9.99. Xbox Series XS will be 50% off for the first three months of launch, priced at $19.99 US dollars. After three months, the game will cost $39 on both platforms. That's for the single player and GTA online bundle. Uh, the standal. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. But there's more in case you I'm hoping you're taking notes here. The standalone GTA online will be free for three months on PS5. Then will cost $19.99. And the GTA online standalone edition on Xbox Series X and S will be $9.99 for three months. And then it'll cost $20. Ryan, did I lose you at any point in uh, in my incoherent rambling about pricing? I, I may have. Uh... Completely lost consciousness <laughs> in the middle of that, but it's okay. I'm back now. Jonathan, uh, you seem to be also holding in well. I mean, so I th- the thing for me is I think it's pretty simple because it's just marketing agreements. The whole reason all this is happening is just because of a marketing agreement, which makes it weird and convoluted, absolutely. But it's, it's one of those things where I think we've we've seen the sort of playstation and gta online prep that's been happening for a while like every month you've been able to redeem a million gta online bucks i I don't know what the currency is called space bucks Uh, thank you and then bring them into gta 5 uh whenever you know it it was coming over for for ps5 and so part of that bundle lets you get gta online for free if you're a playstation plus subscriber which you should do like even if you don't plan to play it in the near future just redeem it it's going to be free. Why pay extra money? But I think that's the reason you see these cheaper prices on PlayStation versus Xbox is just this was the way the marketing deal shook out. Could you expand on that a little bit? Basically, you're just saying that uh, there were some meetings between some people who make big decisions and then there was probably some money that changed hands. The three protagonists of GTA V met with Kratos, Aloy, and Jin Sakai, and they all hashed it out together. No, yeah, it's one of those things, you know, we see, uh, we've seen this, I think, more and more, especially as this generation has gone on. I think, Ryan, we can both attest to every sort of showcase coming with those launch console exclusive or launch timed exclusive or launch you know all those little asterisks that come with the word exclusive these days uh, often become because these third parties are, are working with the platform holders to give people a reason to buy those games on those platforms uh, and so here it has been a, a long-standing thing i think ever since they announced gta 5 coming to next gen there's been sort of the inclination that the marketing side of things was on the playstation side um with that you know consistent monthly gta online redemption that you could do and so here we are finally the game is coming out and i think that's what's ended up with this strange it's cheaper on playstation it's technically even cheaper if you're a playstation plus subscriber because you get gta online for free whereas an xbox still cheaper at launch but not as cheap as it could be if you bought it on playstation yeah we've seen content be timed exclusive as you noted there jonathan but i'm not sure we've ever seen discounts be Content exclusive. I, I can't recall a time when a game has come out at the same time on both platforms, but but been intentionally cheaper on one than on the other. I, the, there may very well be an example out there that I'm not uh, recalling off the top of my head, but uh, I can't think of one, and I certainly can't think of one for as as significant of a of a, of a franchise as Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, it's uh, what the second biggest selling game of all time after minecraft like well over 100 million copies i guess my next question for you jonathan and ryan will you be upgrading uh gta 5 again i most certainly will be yeah i i've said this on podcast unlocked our weekly xbox show uh i i'm excited to play it again i played it of course day one in 2013 that's how long ago that, that game originally came out And then one year later, fall of 2014, we got the Xbox One and PS4 versions that offered, uh, among other things, the sort of the big content edition 
was that first person mode, which was cool to check out. Uh, but, you know, I played GT Online when it launched, which for all of you fellow uh, <laughs> fellow game industry veterans, all, all of you from nine years ago who are still, still playing now, it's uh, GT Online did not launch well. You know, it's it's this thriving thing now. But back then it was uh, it was kind of a disaster. So, you know, I actually am looking forward to revisiting this at 60 frames and with you know more graphical bells and whistles. I haven't played it in so long. I it is one of my favorite games of all time. I think it is one of the greatest games of all time. So uh, I actually am excited to go back into this game again. Awesome. Jonathan, what about you? Uh, well, for me, when GTA V first came out, I was just getting into middle school, so I couldn't really play. <laughs> what? G- no, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm totally. I was not that young. Okay, but don't I, do that. I was going to gonna believe you. I was too. <laughs> uh, I had just started the third grade, and things were going well, but I wasn't allowed to play GTA. Um, no, I I was at a point in my life where I wasn't playing a lot of open world games because I just wasn't gaming as much at the time, and so I actually played maybe under 10 hours of GTA 5 when it came out. And then I didn't play it on PS4 for whatever reason. And then all throughout this generation, I've had it loaded up on my PS4. I've been like, maybe it'll be the time to finally play. And then I knew the next generation version was coming out. So I've been waiting for this version to finally play GTA 5. That is probably an anomaly for many people. (laughs) But I'm excited to finally jump into it. Uh, I really, I played GTA 4 when I was younger and genuinely loved it. So I'm sure I'm going to love GTA 5. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm finally excited to experience it. Check out GTA online. I don't know how much time I'll be able to invest in a world like that because I already have a few online multiplayer things happening, but yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. I think the only caveat for me is just, it's a really busy time for open world games right now. <laughs> uh, I don't think you are an, an anomaly. You know, you talk about, yeah. I don't think you are. Cause you know, this is a game that is, it's one of those like two or three games along, you know, with Minecraft that is so broken through the cultural barrier of just everybody knows Grand Theft Auto, that uh, somebody who's got a PS5 or, or a Series X now that's 20 at, was 11 years old when this game came out and, <laughs> and probably didn't play it when it first came out. So it's one of those things where it is just going to continue to find new audiences the longer Rockstar keeps it you know, updated and, and fresh. And of course, with GTA Online, it's going to continue to to get new content. So it's, you know, they've, they've managed to sort of get the, the, the perpetual motion machine going <laughs> on this game. And it doesn't seem like it's ever going to stop. Well, and it's, it's one of those funny things as we talked about, I think a few weeks ago with GTA six, that's why there's no rush to get GTA six out right now because they continue to find success with five. I'm yeah. sure this, you know, sales, even though it's going to be on sale, that's going to make it even more attractive. So it's probably going to continue to climb up those sales charts as it, as it continues to be more successful. And then online is just a, you know, I, I, Ryan, you mentioned it launched in a, in a not great state, but it has become such a big phenomenon. So It is a thing that continues to be, I think, the beating heart of why Grand Theft Auto has remained so relevant right now. And and they they don't need to rush GTA 6. They they (laughs) will put it out when it's good and ready. Yeah, there's no doubt that we would have gotten GTA 6 already had there never been a Grand Theft Auto online. There's (laughs) we'll never know. Right. Because we don't live in that parallel universe. But I would be willing to bet, you know, a, a, a nice lunch that 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 would have been the case. (laughs) But no, we can never prove we can never see who wins the bet. But. There's there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, it's it's very interesting that uh, GTA five is in a lot of ways the Xbox and PlayStation four version of Mario Kart in that they're not going to make a sequel for Mario Kart because it just keeps selling. And there was a time when every PlayStation four purchased was also purchased with a copy of GTA five. The attach rate for PlayStation four and GTA five for a time was one to one. Everybody who bought a PS four bought the game at launch too. So yeah, I also am going to upgrade again. I mean, <laughs> I, I love this game and I will say before we move on, GTA five runs great on the steam deck. So if you have one of those, check it out. 1200 by 800, but still, all right, <laughs> let's talk about the state of play. Sony had a state of play today. Jonathan, I know you were talking about it on beyond. Would you mind uh, filling us in on all this exciting news that came out of the, today's state of play? Sure, I'll I'll just play that episode of Beyond right now. That might just be easier <laughs> to do. 
no, this the the state of play. We we were having this discussion on the show, and I do encourage people, you know, to listen to the full thing because it was is a much more in depth discussion. The thing about state state of play is they very much have over the course of the last year or two made it clear that and it's, it's a weird distinction, but state of play is not where you go for the biggest PlayStation announcements, even though it is a PlayStation put on show. It is a show primarily to showcase the multi-platform and third-party offerings on PlayStation. So PlayStation showcases, which have been happening for the last couple of years, are where you get the God of War Ragnaroks and the Horizon Forbidden West and the third-party stuff like Final Fantasy 16, which people were hoping to see here, uh, but we didn't get. And, and so those are the showcases where you're going to get the really big sh- show. Uh, for, yeah. for this one, I think... They messaged it well, as as probably as well as they have recently, where they said this was going to be primarily focused on Japanese partners and publishers uh, with a focus on on their games as well as some other stuff. And that was pretty much what it was. So it also probably means it wasn't for everyone. But, you know, speaking on Podcast Beyond, Jada Griffin is a really big fan of a lot of these games from Square Enix and Capcom and, and the like. And she was really happy with the state of play. She was excited by there were a couple new Square RPGs announced at the end of the show. Uh, the Dia Feld or Dia Field Chronicle and uh, Valkyrie Elysium. There were, uh, you know, a couple other games showcased as well there. There was a, a new Capcom game that people thought was Dino Crisis, but then was not Dino Crisis. Uh, Exo Primal, which sees mechs fighting uh, dinosaurs raining from the sky, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is a big thing. Probably the biggest PlayStation next-gen reveal, though, of the show was something that I, I'm actually happy is becoming a more regular pattern for PlayStation, and that's the fact that Returnal is getting a really big free update, and that includes the new ability to have co-op, so you can play the entire game in co-op, as well as a brand new sort of endless roguelike even though the game itself had roguelike elements a sort of endless roguelike tower that you'll keep trying to ascend and will get increasingly difficult as you go and the whole point is to see how far you can get how high you can get your score uh it's a totally free update it's coming in just a few weeks and this sort of lines up with the trajectory we've seen of a couple past uh playstation games probably most recently with or most notably with ghost of tsushima when we got a, a huge multiplayer mode for free as a bonus update unexpectedly um that's a really cool thing that i think we get to see from playstation and i hope we continue to see that i'm personally hoping i think there's a lot of room for you know horizon as as a multiplayer option as well but i think that was the biggest thing if you're looking for playstation next gen news at this show but at the end of the day the state of play is not going to be where we see the new gameplay footage for god of war unless they tell us it is it's not going to be where we see brand new playstation franchises most likely announced there's always the potential but that, that's sort of where I've come to a state of plays. And so I think if this was one directed to your gaming interests, I think it worked well for the most part. But if it wasn't, it probably passed by and you were like, well, that did nothing for me. Seems to kind of be the two camps I've seen. Yeah. So uh, you're on the record then. If if people were disappointed, it's their own fault. Well, I ah, don't see, think don't that's fall for how that. I said Don't fall for that. It. No, no uh, but... It, it is a thing where, you know, we are in a, a cycle of all these showcases happen all the times. So there's the hope of rumors and leaks and expectations of things, but we really can only go by what PlayStation says is going to be at the show. And in terms of what they said was going to be at the show, and in terms of the history of State of Play, as we actually put up a piece this week looking back at what's been announced at every State of Play and PlayStation Showcase, you see the pattern as it as it plays out over the last three years. You see what gets announced, what gets held for the showcases, what gets held for single game showcases. This, this is just sort of the way they've been doing State of Plays recently. And for that, I think it worked. I do think it wasn't for everyone and definitely probably alienated some people hoping there was going to be a God of War release date. But my, my bet is that whenever the mid-year showcase happens, that'll be where we see it. Well, thank you, Jonathan, for uh, taking us through the state of play. Now we're going to talk about last week's poll results. The poll last week. What game releasing in March are you most excited for? Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, 25.5% of the vote. Ghostwire Tokyo coming in pretty close, 23.4%. Gran Turismo 7, of course, already out, 22.7%. Next Gen GTA 5 is 16%. And Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin 12.3%. 12.3%. Oh, and that was one of the things that came out of State of Play. There's a demo available for that. So next week's poll, are you planning to play GTA 5 on next gen? Yes, no, or are you still undecided? And that will do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you, Ryan and Jonathan. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more PS5 and Xbox Series X news, and we will see you then.